All right, so what I want to do is take a moment to style this screen a little bit. It's starting to look really jumbled up. So um, CSS will let us do that. We're going to need to add some classes to our elements, and then we define that CSS, and it'll look nicer than what it currently looks like. So, for example, with the table, all of this that appears is part of a div. Everything after this, these buttons, is a div called the result, if you recall. So that means we can write some CSS, first of all, to align things a little bit better. And then we can go in and add some, some classes and some IDs to specifically target the elements. So let's start off this way first. Um, let's uh, we'll go back to Notepad, to the index file itself. And let's go back to where we, back to the bottom where we've got the, the um, section on. Actually, we don't really need to. It's already there. We've got an ID called the result. What we need to do now is open up our CSS file, our project CSS file. So kodika.extra.css. Let's go ahead and open that. Kodika.extra.css. Uh, let's add this at the end of the document. We'll add a quick comment here. For styling elements of the um, my classes results. And so we've got that ID the result. Playing with the element inspector and such, I can figure out a fine-tuned amount of space. Let's see if I can do very quickly here. Uh, elements. Right now, the the result there. Let's see about margin top. Uh, what does two m's look like? Too much. One point two. One point one. What? I think that one's okay. Okay, no, it still needs something. So, okay, margin top. On the result here, we then add margin dash top colon. I think it's going to work okay with a maybe a point four em. Now, a little bit of space above the result. It's too close to my buttons that are already on screen. With the element inspector, I played around a little bit around there perhaps so margin dash top a little bit less than half an m of breathing room at the top of the of the results div the table at the moment works but it's pretty bad looking so what i want to do is several things to to style that table in order for that to work that table should have an ID or a class so that we can control it. Before we start adding some CSS, let's go to our JavaScript file and give it a class when we create it. So over on line 69, we've got the table. That's where we're that's where we're creating the table. But we have no we have no class or ID attached to it. We could write a simple table um, rule in our CSS file, but then that would apply to all tables throughout our whole app. Maybe one table needs to look a certain way, and on another screen, a table needs to look another way. So I don't want to write a generic table tag. I want to give this a class, or an ID actually, just this one table. So uh, we can add it after the border. ID equals single quotes, and we'll call this uh, class table. This is the table for the classes we're displaying. Save this. And then now when we go over to our JavaScript file, 
now we have something that we can uh, attach ourselves to, or anchor ourselves to. We can now start to define various aspects of this table because it's got an ID. Class table. All right, so back on our CSS file at the end, we're going to define what does class table do. It's an ID, so we add the pound, pound symbol. The first thing is I don't want it to stretch all the way across the, the screen, so we're going to say that the width of this element is going to be, let's say, 90%. You can always fine-tune it. And if we don't stretch it across the whole screen, then it'll just be leaning to the left. If you recall the trick from before, we can then add margin, simply margin, and then auto. So it'll put an automatic amount of space on the left and the right, and the top and bottom, so that it's aligned in the center of its area. So now that table will be centered. We're seeing that the table is bumped up right to the edge next to that delete CRN. So we can add, uh, we can then further define margin bottom, and we'll play with this. But let's just start off with a point uh, two M's. Give us a little breathing room below the table. And then these these three things are just kind of arbitrary in that. After looking, after researching, looking for some of the best visual results, this is what I found. Uh, right now, we, we hadn't quite tested it, but technically, if you're writing a really long name, it will not automatically word wrap. It'll actually go outside of your table. Your text will appear outside of your table in a weird way. So we're going to activate word wrap. We're also going to have the ability for it to break so that it doesn't. Um, keep going off the edge. And this is just some stuff that I found that seemed to work. So this is a table dash layout fixed and then text dash wrap normal and then word dash wrap break word. So these three things from my research seemed to give me the result that I want so that these names, if I write a really long name, or a really long class title, it won't just go off the edge of that cell and invade another cell. It will actually break like a like word wrap should. So those three things should do it. Right now the table itself also visually is not that interesting to look at and if it's not that interesting to look at as a table it's hard to read. So I want to add some colors here and there to um, make it interesting. Next uh, a couple of lines go to line 70. We're going to say class table again, but then we're going to say space th, curly braces. So we're going to say any table heading that is part of the class table, table, let's define it like this. So if we had simply said th, every table heading throughout the whole app would look like this that we're about to define. We want to say only the table headings in this particular table will look like this. That's why I've got this space here. Basically, it's saying this element is inside of that element. And what I want to do is uh, we'll add a nice uh, background color. You can figure out what colors you like later, but we'll just start with purple. And therefore, our text. Now we've got a dark background, and if we don't change the text, we've got a dark foreground. So just for some contrast, we'll then do color. This is color of the text, white. Again, you can choose your perfect colors later. But I'm saying all headings of this table, we'll have a background color of purple and a text color of white. And then I mentioned on the last class that once, we've get it, once we have a lot of data, we've got a lot of rows, it becomes a little hard to read. What we often see in well-defined tables is what is known as zebra striping where one row has a particular color, the next row has another color, the next row has the first color, alternating. That lets us read the table a lot easier. CSS, I believe CSS3, maybe CSS2, has this ability to do that for us very quickly. So, the next rule that we'll have here, 
we need to again specify it's going to be only attached to this particular table. So we'll say class table space tr. We're going to say let's style these rows. But this would style every single row. I want to style every odd row, every other row. So we've got this trick that we can do where we specify uh, colon nth dash of dash type nth of type which which type as many as we have nth so something to the nth power is you know every single one so as many as we have rows specifically the odd ones so then we add here odd and then the rest so this trick right here will let us target every every row that we have specifically the odd ones. We can obviously change that to even. We'll start it with the even ones. I'm starting with the odd ones because I've already got a heading of a color. We can count that as my first one and then the next one and then the next one. But uh, what I want to do is add a background color. So we'll say um, I have here kind of an ugly color but we'll do background dash color and it's going to be a simple gray color. So now we're saying every other row of this table will be this gray. I'm going to save this and run this. See how I'm going so far. Again, I can't test it in, in Chrome all by itself because now it's expecting to be in an app on a device. So I do have to wait for that to load on my real device. Let me start that up and then I'll... back to my code. So I'm waiting for that to load up and this is what I've got so far and um, right now I'm trying to just spruce that table up a little bit. Stretching it out, centering it, giving me some breathing room. Word wrap, the headings will have a, a color that stands out and is readable and then every other row will have a different, will have that color a different color than its even counterpart for readability. Let's see, so I'm going to load that up. Uh, I'm going to add a few more classes just to make it obvious. There we go. So the result is a centered table. It doesn't go all the way from edge to edge. My first row is that purple with a white um, uh, background color, a uh, text color. And then the first row is not a color, then the odd row is a background color, and then the next one is not a color. I add another class. And it continues like that automatically. I think that bottom uh, space is way too small, so then I could go back and further refine that. Oh, 
point two. Maybe point eight might work a bit better. And notice text wrap normal is word wrap normal is removed. I guess. All right, so it seemed that perhaps a uh, margin bottom of point two is a bit small, so I'll put point eight. What's that? That's looking pretty good. Um, again, this down here. Uh, we created columns. Remember a while ago those divs. We created some columns. So let's edit a little bit more of the CSS because we, 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 those again look a little odd, but we've got some CSS that hopefully should help us with that. So we'll go back to Notepad. First, we'll define a div of two call. This was that div that wraps the whole element down there. And I want to have that stretch out about 85% of the screen. And that way we can also do margin auto so that it's centered. And I want some space at the bottom because, again, it's right next to other things. Padding bottom. So we'll do a padding. Uh, 0.4m. We have a left column. <clears throat> left call and a right call. I don't want these to, to actually be equally 50-50 because the left column it's only gonna have the button that says update class or on the right side it's gonna have the those input boxes. So actually I'm gonna make my left column um, smaller than the right column. So I can, uh, first what I want to do is say float left so that everything is on one line instead of dividing into separate lines. Float left. And we'll say the width of this, uh, we'll start with, let's see what it looks like, at 20%. And therefore the right column is also going to have float left because we want it to still be along the same uh, line together but then its width will be the, the leftover, which is I'll let that run. Uh, while that runs, we're almost ready to wrap up. What we're going to do when we come back next time is the app is pretty finished. There's still some things that I could add to it and such, but that's why we could have a version 2. Remember that I said about you could continue to work on an app for a long time. I know myself I've got these great ideas that I've still got on the drawing board halfway through, 75% through, because I keep thinking of things to do. There's a certain point where we decide, well, this is our minimal viable product. This is something that I can put out to the world that works very close to what I'm trying to do, but it still needs a few things, so I put out a version 1, and then eventually I can release a version 2 once I've started to have, <coughs> have activity on version 1. So there's still things that we can obviously improve, but we can save that for version 2. I, I want to then, um, before we wrap, remind you 
that in the network folder I gave you instruction number nine. You, you should get a copy of that and look at it by the time we come back next time because that's what we're going to do together next time. We're going to talk about signing your final APK. We need to create a developer credentials, which is totally free. This is not the one we pay for later. We created a key store. It's our developer credentials to show that this is our app. We do that via Android Studio or the command line, but we'll do it through Android Studio. Once we've got that credential, then we have to then instead eventually instead of simply doing Cordova run, we will eventually do Cordova build Android dash dash release. This won't work yet because we have to then provide it our credentials with a password and all of that. And then finally we'll get a final finished version of our project. If you've been paying attention to this output here, you might notice that we're getting Android dash debug dot APK. This is still the testing version, the debug version. The app stores will not accept the debug version until you've signed it with your credentials. That's what we're going to do in sheet number nine when we come back next time. So you should look at it before we do so that you know what we're doing. I just want to confirm here what does this look like. My classes. I also shortened those, that text there, add clear show. Show that. Need to play a little bit with it, but look, now notice that. I need some more space. I don't know why I said more padding bottom instead of padding top. But anyway, I need some space here. This is uh, cutting off, but I kind of like that. So I can still massage it a little bit with CSS. And uh, I'm on the right track. So we'll, we'll end at this point. I'll put my code in the folder. And uh, when we come back, we'll, uh, we'll continue, and our project will, will become live on a real app store.